I'm assuming we're recording right now. We are recording right now. Okay. Chris Gampett here, editor-in-chief of The Fablographer. Thank you guys for checking out my video on how to live calibrate your display. Just to let you guys know, first and foremost, this video is actually sponsored by Datacolor. And in order to do this, I'm going to be using the Datacolor Spider 5 Elite. This is a product that I've actually been using for a while now, and I've really trusted Datacolor for many years. Their interface is just easier for me to use, and I actually really like the product and the whole interface and basically what you can do. So um, I'll be using it in combination with the program on my iMac, my 27-inch iMac right here. So let me talk a little bit about the reasons why you should calibrate your display. So calibrating your display has a lot to do with the way that people are seeing your images. If I'm viewing my images here in my office, I know for a fact that not everyone has the same lighting setup in my office that everyone else has. So they may be viewing it in, let's say, an office with cubicles with lights coming from above and all that stuff. I don't have that. So their viewing experience is going to be much different. The really cool thing, though, is Apple products overall really kind of calibrate their displays to more or less be the same. So if you look at something on an iPhone and you go to someone else's iPhone, they'll look more or less the same. And with computers, uh, that's not really the case. But that's starting to change more or less, um, at least with certain computers like uh, the iMac, the Surface, and all those. But calibration doesn't only have to do with the viewing experience. It also has to do with the editing experience to be able to get the most from the highlights and the best colors and all that stuff. So then there is the fact that so many other things kind of affect your viewing experience. My iMac here generally has a hood around it that blocks out extra light coming in. Now... Extra light coming in, you should be aware that your eye is always trying to find some sort of middle white balance point. So, in the summertime, for example, I'll usually have the windows in my office open, and there is green coming in from my neighbor's backyard, and then the buildings are a combination of white and tan. So, sunlight is bouncing off those, and then it's coming in. And then as it comes in, it's hitting white walls, it's hitting... Uh, my brown area that I use to manage all of our product inventory, and then I have this light. So all that light together is kind of combining. Now if I had blackout curtains, then that light wouldn't be affecting my viewing experience at all. So there are a bunch of different factors. If you're editing on a laptop, then you go from one place to another to another, and one cafe may differ than being on an airplane, for example you're not going to have the same viewing experience. One is thousands of feet in the air, and the other one is somewhere in a city or a country or something like that. So I'm going to show you guys uh, how to get into this, and I will be answering questions a little bit later on. You'll see. So in order to start, what you do is you take the spider and you plug it into the USB. And they work via USB, you install the software, software is already installed, just for the interest of time. So I'm starting up the software right now, and what it tells you to do is a couple of things before you begin the calibration process. One of them is warming up the display, and this is what I tell everyone to do, because the longer your display is on, the warmer it kind of becomes. It's kind of like a car. So they recommend that you do at least a half hour. And then they ask you uh, about your lighting conditions, they ask you about other display controls, like if you can control the white balance, the contrast, the brightness, and uh, then they ask you to ensure that the spider is connected to the computer. So all that's done right now, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click next. And what they do is uh, they offer you a, dump, a different number of workflows. You have a step-by-step -step assistant, you have a studio match, and you have an expert console. Most photographers will be more than good enough with a step-by-step -step assistant. So I'm going to click Next. And I have an option to recalibrate my display, check the calibration, or full calibration. 
I am going to do a full calibration. Let's see how that works. Um, there are other options as well too, like there's gamma, there's the white point, and then there's the brightness. And you can check off the recommended options, or you can just go with whatever they have there. Um, for the moment, I'm going to go with the recommended options just because of the fact that that's much easier for us in the interest of time. And then we we'll click click next. And now what it tells you to do is it's going to measure the room light. So it wants you to put the spider on your desk. And as you can see, there are a bunch of different places that I can put it on my desk. If I put it here, it's going to think the light is too intense. But if I put it here, this is more or less my viewing angle. So I'm going to put it here. I'm going to click next and it's going to measure the light. And right now it's saying that the room light is medium. So this level is appropriate for typical photo editing uh, and you can calibrate the display. So we can go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go ahead and now it's going to want you to place the unit there. So it's got this cord, the USB port is the back, and then it has this counterweight system, kind of. So you adjust it so that it can be stuck right there. And now it's not going to move. But in addition to that too, they also ask you to make your display as flat as possible. I'm going to do a little bit of a hack to get that in, so that way it's flush against the screen. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to click next. And now I'm going to begin a process. And you more or less have to be as still as possible in front of your display. And I also really recommend that you wear white because white absorbs a bunch of colors versus like gray and blue and white and uh, other colors uh, that will kind of reflect colors. So always try to wear black whenever you can. So it's starting, and in the meantime, I'm going to take one or two questions, and then we're going to go into another phase of the calibration. So, Mike, are there any other questions so far? Um, yes. Uh, what is a popular way for calibration? Popular way for calibration is exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm using the Spider 5 unit, and uh, that this is more or less the uh, uh, best and most popular way of calibrating. Uh, before I go answer the other question, though, it's telling me, hey, uh, could you adjust the brightness control so that we can actually uh, calibrate? So I'm going to adjust the brightness right here, and I'm going to click Update, and I can tell just by this little bar here what I, it wants to be. So right now I went too low, and now I'm going to go up in power. And that's too much. I'm going to mess around with this. Um, are there any other questions for the moment, Mike? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, how much does this real retail for? That um, I am not sure at the moment. I don't have that in my mind, but I will be able to provide that within a blog post and on YouTube. So later on, I'm actually going to put this video on our YouTube channel, and there will be a blog post this weekend about that. I'm going to click update again. Are there any other questions so far, Mike? Uh, as of right now, no. Okay. So that's a little bit too much, and then this is just outside. So right now, there is this option that it wants me to be in like a certain green area. And I can't really get it to that, but I'm getting it as close as I possibly can without going over. So I got that, and now I'm going to adjust the brightness. And that is done. So I'm going to click continue, and I'm going to be as still as possible in front. And you're going to see it's going to go through like the colors of the rainbow. This is kind of a cool process, but try to stay as still as possible, because if you move around, uh, it's going to be thrown off by a number of colors and a whole bunch of other things. So you're usually best off just kind of sitting in front of the display. Mike, if there are any other questions coming in, I can go ahead and take them during this process. I will fire away when they come in. Sure. So what the uh, spider is doing right now is it's checking the various colors. It's going through RGB right now, and as you can see, it's going through different shades of red. It will go through different shades of green and then different shades of blue. And uh, with full calibration, sometimes it goes into like purples and uh, full Roy G. Biv. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Actually, I have a question. Mm -hmm. How often should you calibrate your monitor? That's a great question, Mike. Um, 
you should calibrate your monitor. It really depends um, on how often you are exporting and the type of monitor that you're doing. If you are changing location, like if I was doing this on my laptop, I would do it calibrated to my office and then I'd probably go to a cafe. And if I've never been to that cafe before, I would probably want to calibrate it for that cafe. But obviously the lighting can change at that cafe. And it also depends on how often you're exporting work. If you're only exporting once a month, then like you can probably calibrate only once a month. But if you're exporting work like every other day or every day, then I really recommend that you calibrate uh, once a week or so. And the really cool thing about Spider software is that it can remind you to calibrate. And will this process help with printing? Absolutely. So this process really helps with printing because if you're in Lightroom or if you're in Capture One, you will be able to save the color, the screen profile, and then when you are printing, you'll be able to tell the printer to kind of match. Now, the thing is that printing has more to do with the Adobe RGB spectrum, and that really depends on the monitor that you're using. I was reviewing a BenQ monitor that covered 95% of the Adobe RGB spectrum, but unfortunately this iMac only covers around 75% of the Adobe RGB spectrum. So, um, unless you're really geekily into color the way I am and other people are sometimes into dynamic range and high ISOs, then um, you probably won't notice a difference, but many people that print will really notice a difference. And what's really cool is this allows your printer um, especially those from Epson and Canon, to match the display as best as possible. Is that room light direction uh, important for calibration? Is the room light direction important for calibration? It can be because um, you really want it to be consistent with what you're actually doing when you're editing because of the fact that if it's changing, then you kind of have to calibrate all over again. And you want to have a lot of control over the light when you are editing. Um, because if it's too bright, then it's affecting your eyes and kind of the contrast with the display and how you perceive it. And if it's too dark, then um, your eyes are kind of working overtime and it's not really recommended. So the direction of the light can really kind of play into it. But um, in addition to that too, the color of the light and the way that, that light is kind of bouncing off of things also really depends because this light right here, let's say it's hitting my chair, which is kind of like maroon. If it's hitting that, that's going to kind of bounce back off. Um, if uh, I'm sitting in a certain position or something like that. I hope that answers your question. Let me know if you have a follow up and I'll be able to help you. Are there any other questions so far, Mike? Uh, so far, no. Okay, cool. So how long does this process usually take? A full calibration can take maybe... Oh, man, maybe 10 minutes. And uh, a recalibration, nowhere as long, usually. But then, in addition to that, too, um, I would say maybe 3 to 5 minutes is the longest I've maybe spent for, like, a recalibration. But you can also go more in depth with the tests. Uh, you can test it for different uh, kind of color ranges and stuff like that. And that can take hours and a really long time. Gotcha. Now, is this applicable to video at all? It absolutely is applicable to video. And um, it also really depends on the monitor you're working with. Typically, though, um, video is shown off on screens. And right now, it is saying that we are all done, and I can click Finish. And uh, to get back to that question earlier on, um, it allows you to save the profile, kind of like I have right here. Now, it's called, uh, it's saying that it'll save it as Apple iMac 1. I'm going to save it as Apple iMac Calibration for Data Color. And then I can save that profile. So now I have saved that profile. And now it says, congratulations, your profile has been created. And now when I click Next, it can show me the, un the calibrated view that I had before versus the new one. So if I switch, there is a very slight difference 
when it comes to how cool the image is and how much the contrast is. So it's saying calibrated or uncalibrated. And when I look at these images right here, this is the uncalibrated way, uncalibrated way, I'm sorry. And the skin tones over there are kind of pale, whereas if I go to calibrated, they become a little bit warmer. And the reason why they're warmer is because right now there's more intense light coming onto there. So it's trying to find a way to balance the screen for my eyes. And you can also choose various image sets. You can put your own in, I believe, custom. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of different options that you can do here. And now I click next. And now what it also does is it gives you kind of a report. And right now I have, it's covering 100% of sRGB. Now if I want to do Adobe RGB, it's covering 82% of Adobe RGB. And for NTSC, for video guy, it's covering 78% of Adobe RGB, um, of NTSC, I'm sorry. So the Adobe RGB isn't that bad. It's not 95%. The sRGB is fine, which means that for putting images on the web, that's totally fine. And for NTSC, 78%, um, I mean, that's not great, but I mean, if I were still in Catholic school, 75 was actually our passing grade, so that would be okay. Um, you should also kind of consider the display that this is going to be shown on. Like, if you're shooting a movie and you want it to be in a theater, you should kind of calibrate for that and shoot for that. Um, a lot of photographers, um, many of them shoot in sRGB, but Adobe RGB gives you more uh, of a color gamut. But in addition to that, too, you can kind of change it later on in RAW because all that information is there. And that's really about it. Um, are there any other questions before, Mike? Negative. Okay. Then in that case, um, I think that we are more or less done. Um, the Spider 5 Elite is what I use. And these actually have a, an upgrade program right now in the month of September 2017. So if you go to Datacolor's website or if you look up Datacolor Spider Upgrade, you will be able to upgrade from Datacolor devices up to the new uh, the Elite, or you can upgrade from any other device, from any other manufacturer, to this. So that's really about it. I've been using these for years. The design has changed. They've always been reliable and they've always worked. And they're pretty portable, so sometimes when I go on press trips, I'll actually bring these with me. And it'll be interesting because I'll be the only journalist actually sitting there trying to calibrate my display. And they're more or less important for me when it comes to actually figuring out colors. Um, yeah, that's really about it, guys. Um, any other questions? Any last questions? Uh, nope, just kind of comments of thanks and using the four. Cool. Then I think that we're all set, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And... Uh, I will be putting this video on our Facebook page, and I'll also be putting it on our YouTube, and then it will also go out to our blog this weekend. So if you're an email subscriber, or obviously you're following us on Facebook, be sure to check it out. Thanks a lot, guys.